It's the only jointer you're going to use. Three. Which jointer is the only one you're going to use? Green. Green, right over there. All right. I'm going to show you on this gray one here because I personally don't like this one. But the reason why you don't, you're not going to use this one, is it's set up for a sixteenth of an inch cut. That's set up for an eighth inch cut. So this is for my higher levels for fine finishing. So again, only going to use the green. So let's go over the parts of the jointer. A is referring to the on-off switch, which is down here. B is referring to the fence. C is referring to the table. And D is referring to the blade door. So I said this is just similar to a planer. The only difference is if you can see inside here. Calvin, can you come over here? There you go. Can you come over here so you can see? We have what's called a helical blade system. All right, and what that means is the blades are wrapped around the circumference of the cutter head helically. So basically, if I were to grab the straight blades of a, uh, a planer and I were to twist it, that's called a helical twist. All right, so this is called a helical cutter head. Right? The benefit to this is that it cuts cleaner on figured wood where there's different types of grain patterns and it does really good with hard ones. Right? Normally we have just straight blades facing in here. This is my in-feed table. Right? So when I'm feeding my work piece through, I have to start on this side here and work my way to the out feed table. Right? The reason being is this is set a sixteenth of an inch lower than my out feed. That's how I can take a sixteenth of an inch off my work piece itself. Does that make sense? Again, the blade is rolling towards me. What's up? So like you said, like that one is like more lowered. Yeah. Can you turn your stuff? So, so I, I can always adjust it for different measurements, mm -hmm. right? But right now it's locked in at 16th, a sixteenth of an inch. Now, okay. if you were to, all right, the blade guard does prevent you to, from going this way, but if you were to force it going this way, What's going to happen is it's going to shoot across the shop that way and it's going to hit who's ever behind you. So again, the arrows are pointing the direction of flow, so you're always going to feed from in feed to out to you, never the other way around. All right? Now, safety on this machine is very easy. Your fingers are never to go below the guard. Right? You're never to manually open the guard either with your hand. Reason being is if you were to slide your fingers across this tabletop, you got the oxy table, you would have a sixteenth of an inch less of the finger. Right? So again, when you're doing this, right, if your fingers go below the guard while I'm supporting my work piece, you're gonna use a push. Right? So when I'm here, everyone notices the same stance. My goal is I'm pushing my work piece against the fence. I'm not pushing against the table. If I press down really hard, what's going to happen is the work piece could have what we call a bowing. And you'll have this U-shaped piece and it's no good. All right? So again, your force is pushing against that fence and you're carrying it across. So my front hand, my left hand, is supporting it. My work piece across here. My rear hand of my right hand is my feeder hand. I'm feeding my work piece through. All right? So, what I'm going to do, got my work piece set up, I got my push stick ready, because my fingers are probably going to go the guard. Let it spin up to speed. first because we can use the table saw to cut off the bad stuff. 